हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज विकास पाटिल दिस इज द इलेवेंथ चैप्टर ऑफ ग्रेट नाइन द हाइड्रोस्फियर दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द चैप्टर वॉटरी प्लानट ऑफ ऑल द प्लानट दैट वी आर अवेयर ऑफ Earth is the only planet that has water in all three states solid liquid and gases that's why earth is also known as a watery planet undeniably water is one of the most important resources available around us almost 3/4 of the surface of the earth is covered with water total water present on earth is around 1.4 billion cubic kilometers out of which 97% is in the form of water in oceans this is saline water the remaining 3% is also not uh, directly usable of of these 3% this 3% uh, 2% is in the form of frozen water in ice caps glaciers and then 1% of it is in the form of fresh water in lakes rivers underground water so if you look at the distribution of water on earth uh, oceans uh, contain 97% ice caps glaciers 2% ground water lakes soil moisture atmosphere streams rivers they all form uh, just 1% of the total water as we all know the water present on earth continuously moves in a cycle by changing its state from solid to liquid to gas to back to solid and liquid so that's a water cycle apart from that the water present in the oceans seas bays gulfs uh, they uh, undergo three types of movements waves tides and ocean currents the first form of movement is waves waves are very easy to identify waves are basically uh, the up and down movement seen on the water surface this could be created because of uh, the friction by wind or when the water moves towards the coast as the coast uh, depth becomes less the wo- the waves uh, increase in height giant wave caused by underwater earthquake is known as tsunami tides tides uh, refer to alternate rise and fall of the ocean water well there are uh, basically two forces responsible uh, for tides to occur one is the gravitational pull of moon and also of sun but there is a general misconception that it's only the moon that causes tides but it is also contributed by sun and the second force is the centrifugal force created by the rotation of earth so the two basic causes of tides are gravitational pull by sun and moon and the centrifugal force by earth let's understand how the moon's gravity gravitational pull affects tides as you know moon uh, is also a heavenly body and it applies it has gravitational pull but then the pull is much lesser than the gravitational pull of earth simply because of the size difference so on some free flowing ob- uh, objects like water are getting affected because of the gravitational pull of moon so you can observe here the side that is facing the moon uh, the water there will be pulled towards the moon so the level of water will rise there and the level of water will fall on the points exactly perpendicular to the direction in which the moon is so these two places will experience low tide while this the 
place facing the sun uh, facing the moon would have high tide as the water from these places will move towards the village on the opposite side of the earth which, uh, from the moon uh, there will be a push to the water outward due to the centrifugal force this is produced simply because the earth and moon are spinning together they are connected through their gravitational pull and there is the center of this pull is somewhere close to the surface um, of the earth which is known as the barysphere uh, and uh, this gravitational pull push will uh, increase the water level on the place which is exactly opposite to the moon so of course we see these places which are neither facing the moon nor opposite they will experience low tide while the other, these places will experience high tide so there is a tidal range tidal range is basically the difference between the high tide and the low tide of a particular place so if you sit on a beach for 24 hours you will find the water level will rise twice and then it will go down twice so the difference between that level is tidal range time difference between tides uh, there is a general un understanding by people that uh, the difference between two heights high tides and two low tides the time taken for two heights high tides and low tides uh, is 24 hours but that is not true because as the earth completes one rotation the moon also moves slightly ahead so actually uh, one cycle of high tide and low tide takes 12 hours and 26 minutes so that means the two two cycles of high tide and low tide would take 24 hours and 52 minutes that is one hour extra so every next high tide or a low tide would get 26 minutes late so instead of six hours it will be six hours and uh, 26 minutes sorry instead of 12 hours it will be 12 hours and 26 minutes so the first high tide is experienced at 11 am the next high tide will come at 11 in 11 26 pm as the earth uh, the moon and the sun uh, are in relation to each other as the the moon is revolving around this earth there are times like new moon and full moon when the earth the sun and the moon they come in the straight line so the sun's gravity which is very less uh, gravitational pull which is very less on earth and the moon's gravitational pull when they combine together since they are in the same line the water levels will rise more than normal which is known as a spring tide here uh, during full moon also the moon the earth and the sun they come in the same line and therefore the pull becomes higher please understand uh, if the pull for moon is this side the push from the centrifugal force will be this side and that will get assistance from sun similarly on new moon the gravitational pull of both new moon and sun uh, will pull the water towards one side so that's a spring tide it's a high 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 tide so these places which are perpendicular they will get the lowest low tide since more water is pulled towards the high tide areas the water from the low tide areas will recede a lot so the high high tides and low low tides So again one more diagram to understand uh, spring tide remember it happens on a new moon and a full moon day neap tide on the other hand neap tide is basically uh, where the gravitational pull of sun and uh, moon cancel each other this will this happens when uh, the moon is in the first quarter or the third quarter where the moon the earth and the sun make a right angle 
so as the moon is moon's gravity is pulling the water towards this side the sun's gravity will pull the water towards the other side so it will not allow the water level to rise as much as the normal high tide so the here the water will rise lower than the normal low tide, normal high tide and on the places which experience low tide here the level of water will not go low so it will remain higher than the normal low tide so this will be the highest low tide here and this will be the lowest high tide so it is lesser than the normal this is more than the normal low tide these are known as neap tides so one more diagram to show as you can easily understand uh, the sun's gravitational pull and moon's gravitational pull are cancelling each other and therefore the high, high tide will not be as high as normal and the low tide will not be as low as normal a complete picture so new moon we have spring tide full moon we have spring tide and first and third quarter we have tides uh, are not just water level rising and going down tides are very relevant to us very important to us in in more than one ways let's look at the importance of tides for us first we have developed the uh, technology to extract the power of rising water level and falling water level to generate turbines and then produce electricity this is known as tidal energy so as the tides come in the turbines move and then electric electricity is produced and the tides as the tides go out the turbines move again producing more electricity so free pollution free low cost and uh, this is available along with every coastline so that's generating tidal electricity next extraction of salt every time the, there is a high high tide spring tide the water level reaches beyond the normal uh, coastline and then as the water recedes if these waters are trapped in uh, salt pans uh, water will evaporate and salt will be left behind we allow this to happen multiple times we'll have enough amount of salt that is left behind by the water and then that helps us to extract salt from the oceans then big ships and uh, boats they find it easy to come into the bay with the high tide and leave the bay with the low tide if they don't leave you can see what happens to them so what boats and ships move in with the tides and move out with the tides then high tides also help in the formation of flood plains as they push the river water back the river water spread sideways and that's how the flood plains are created then it continuous movement of water during high tide and low tide prevents the harbors in the polar countries from freezing during winter otherwise if the water remains still for some time the water will obviously freeze and then those harbors will become uh, non usable then uh, continuous high tide and low tide it cleans the sedimentation of the mouth of the river so during low tide uh, the sediments are taken in well uh, that was all for this session uh, in the next session we will understand ocean currents thank you